But the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, love, peace, joy, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, patience, goodness, kindness, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. Faithfulness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Self control. And self control! Against these things, there is no law. Welcome to the table. It's good to be back in the building. Uh, the only problem is you're not here with me. Uh, but we do have plans to tenderly re reopen on July the 12th. So we're going to try to keep you updated on the reopening task force. Also want to ask you if you would just continue to be in prayer for our nation and our country. We are in really tough times right now. And the most important thing that we can do as Christians is to be praying and hitting our knees. The Bible tells us that we're supposed to love God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Just want to remind you of those things this morning and remind you to continue to pray. Also, I um, want you to know that, you know, summertime is typically when we uh, ramp up our missions activities and have a lot of opportunities for you to serve. Well, obviously we're in a time where traveling is very difficult, but the good news is even in the midst of this world pandemic, our church is going to offer you a way to be engaged. And so I'm going to let you hear from uh, Mignon Fowler, our director of missions, and she's going to share with you a little bit about an upcoming uh, missions event. So uh, here is Missions with Mignon. Hope you enjoy the rest of the service. Glad you guys are with us today. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to tell you about Haiti at Home. This summer, we've partnered with Mission of Hope Haiti to bring you the first ever at home mission trip. It's a seven day virtual experience designed for all ages, so no excuses. Okay, so what does an at home mission trip look like? Each day, you'll be sent a link to your inbox to start your journey, completely on your own timeline. Just like a real mission trip, we'll begin with a welcome and an introduction. And then each day, you'll explore all the ways Mission of Hope works to empower the local community. You'll be asked to join in daily devotions, prayers, learn some Creole, and you'll be given ways that you can help if you choose. The last day will be an outdoor celebration with Mission of Hope. We'll even have a replica of a Haitian home set up for you to tour, and we'll give away two $750 scholarships for future Mission of Hope trips, so you do not want to miss this. This is such a great way for you to gather with your family every day to learn about another country and to experience a mission trip together. You'll pray, you'll serve, and you'll share God's love with a country 1,200 miles away without ever leaving your home. I hope you'll join us for Haiti at Home, July 19th through the 25th. Please go to the missions website to check out all the details. I hope to see you in Haiti. Welcome to worship, everybody. I want to invite you to sing wherever you are. I'm excited to be worshiping with you, even though we're on the computer. We're just going to honor our God, just praise his name. Great are you, Lord. Let's sing it. You give life. You are low. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. The 
Let's sing that again. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your blessing. song to be our prayer, our declaration of truth that we are trusting our good Father in these hard times. So Lord, we just ask that your peace will fall over us as we sing this. Help us to believe these words even in the hardest times, that it is well. When peace like a Attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my love thou hast taught me to. Say it is well, it is well with my soul. Sing it as well. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul.
is nailed to the cross is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul it is well And Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trunk shall. All right, so um, I'm going to start off by saying this. I talk about chickens a lot, and I realize that I talk about chickens. Um, I probably should have been a chicken farmer. In fact, maybe I missed my calling, but we just recently got some chickens. And uh, one of the fun things has been watching my girls learn how to actually raise them and particularly how they handle them. I I'll give you uh, an example. Um, right when we first got the chicks, I came in the house and they had one of the baby chicks out of its pen in their toy dump truck and they were pushing the chicken down the hall. And I said, girls, you can't do that. You're going to hurt the baby chick. And, and so the other thing that I had to learn, uh, teach them how to do was, was how to hold the baby chick. And so uh, first, when they started holding these precious little babies, they took them in their hands and uh, they would squeeze them. They would squeeze them to the point where I thought the poor baby chick's eyes were going to pop out. And uh, so I had to teach them to be gentle when they hold these precious little baby chicks, to be gentle. Um, in other words, they had the ability in their hands to crush them, but they had to be gentle in how they held them. And today we're talking about gentleness uh, in the sermon and in the worship service. We're focusing on gentleness. And, you know, I think gentleness is a word that a lot of times we shy away from. Uh, especially, I'm going to go ahead and say it, especially, I think a lot of guys tend to shy away from the word gentleness. They don't necessarily want to be known as the gentle guy. Um, but I, I want you today, when you hear the word gentle, I, I don't want you to think of it as, as a weak or negative term. Um, in fact, I want you to think of it as a very positive term. Uh, in, in fact, one of the ways that I, I've seen gentleness defined, and I'm, I'm going to give you this definition today, um, is this right here. Gentleness is defined as strength under control. So it's defined as strength under control. Once again, 
Gentleness is this image of having this little baby chick in your hands, and you have the power um, and the authority over the baby chick, um, and you could do damage, but you choose to love the chick and to be gentle. In fact, I believe that gentleness is a sign of a person's confidence and a person's inner strength. You might have memories of a father when you were growing up. I know I have memories of a grandfather when I was growing up who um, was very gentle. He had gentle hands with me. His hands were strong. Uh, they were tough as iron. But, but I can remember that he would reach down and he would hold my hand. I would hold his finger. Um, and he was a very gentle man. You might have a father when you're growing up who wasn't very gentle. Uh, someone who had... Um, uh, who was rough with you, or he was abusive with his words, or um, he, he wasn't gentle because I believe sometimes people who don't have confidence in who they are and, and know who they are as a child of God are not gentle. And, and so we live in a world where we really need more gentle people. And, and I know next week is Father's Day, but I want to speak to the men for, for just a minute and say, you know, a lot of times men, once again, I think that we struggle with this word gentle. We live in a world where we don't know how to be this way. We live in a violent world. We live in a, in, in a world where a, a, a man is taught that, um, that, that the way that he uh, earns respect is by being violent or, or, or demonstrating his strength, sometimes in a negative way. I'll give you an example. I grew up watching Clint Eastwood. I don't know how many of you grew up watching Clint Eastwood, but, but uh, Clint Eastwood always, there would be people who would come in and, and they would shoot up the town. And the plot was almost always the same. After they shot up the town, Clint Eastwood would go and he would get his gun and he would go back and he would take revenge um, on all the people that had attacked him. And there was this feeling inside of you where you went, man, he's getting revenge. That's the best feeling ever. But the truth is, um, the truth is, that's not how we can live in our society today. That's not how God calls us to live. We need men and women but we really need men to hear this. We need men who know how to be gentle and know how to raise their daughters and know how to love their wives and know how to love their brothers and sisters in Christ. Once again, it's not just for men, but it's on my heart today to just to speak to the men and say, guys, we got to learn how to put our trust in God and not our trust in, 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 our, in our muscles or in our bodies or in our fists or, or in weapons. Um, you know, when you think of Jesus, Jesus was somebody uh, who, who was very gentle, yet he had all the strength in the world. I mean, he had the power of God. He could call down all authority that he wanted to. He says that he could call down legions of angels. He was the Lion of Judah, but he was gentle. I love Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 29. And Jesus says this. He says, "'Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And listen to this, he says, for I am gentle and I'm humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus says that he's gentle and he's humble. He's this carpenter. He's this, he's this man's man who knows how to be gentle and knows how to love people. He doesn't need to exert his authority. Um, he, he doesn't need to need to, 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 to exert the strength that he, that he has that he can call down from, from heaven. Rather, he trusts in his Father. And, you know, when you look at Jesus, what he says is he says that we need to transfer our worry and our pain and our hurt over to him and trust that he is the one who has all authority. You know, he doesn't even get rough with his enemies. Even his enemies he's gentle with. I, I, I think about the story um, when, when he's, he's about to be crucified and he's standing before Pilate and Herod and, you know, they think that he's blasphemous. And Jesus has all authority in the world to call down and strike them with lightning or whatever he wants to do. But what does Jesus do? He, he, he does none of that. Jesus, he, he just, he stands there and he's gentle and he's confident. And he knows who he is and he knows who his father is. Jesus had this ability to soften hearts that I envy. I want to be like that. I want to be able to, um, to, to soften violence. You know, what you think about the story of the woman who was caught in adultery and, and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they bring, they bring her to him and, and because she had, had committed adultery, they, they really had authority in that day and time to stone her, to kill her. And, and, and what does Jesus do? Jesus draws a line in the sand and he writes something in the sand and then he, he stoops um, down and, and, and does this and then he says... Uh, 
if, if any of you have not sinned, um, go ahead and cast the first stone. And, and then, then he says to the woman, th this woman who's been in, um, in this adulterous relationship, uh, he says, did anyone condemn you? He says, well, no. Well, neither do I. Go and sin no more. So Jesus had this gentleness about him. He, he, even under intense suffering, even when he was hanging on the cross, even when he had the criminal on his left and the criminal on his right, J Jesus was, um, he, 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 was, he was gentle. <laughs> he looked down at his mother. He looked down at his mother from, from the cross and, and he looked at John and he asked John to look after her. <clears throat> he didn't call down authority from heaven on the people who were crucifying him. Once again, he had confidence in his father. He wasn't a pushover. He was the exact opposite. Jesus cared for the defenseless. He stood for what was right. He stood for what was good. But once again, he did it with gentleness. <clears throat> There's lots of advantages to gentleness, and I want to share with you just a few quick ones today that I thought of. I'll start with this right here. Gentleness diffuses conflict. So it diffuses conflict. Proverbs 15.1 says, A gentle answer turns away wrath but a harsh word stirs up anger. Now listen to that. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. In other words, when somebody gets angry, the Bible says that if we're kind to them, it will diffuse the conflict. It's really easy for us to get mad and yell, and, and it, you know, as they get angry, we get angrier. But it, it, it challenges us. The, the Pro Proverbs challenges us. It says that, that we, we stand in peace. Um. I challenge you today, if, if once again, to come, come back to some of the men who I know personally who struggle with this, I challenge you um, to, to think about con considering having a gentle spirit when you're dealing with conflict. Um, if you have a temper problem or an anger problem, to, to consider thinking about how Jesus diffused conflict. Um, sometimes when I'm in the car with, with my children and, and they start yelling at each other and then I'm tempted to yell back and tell everybody be quiet, everybody shut up in the back. Um, and, and, and then they yell back, and they get angry, and then everything escalates. But rather, if I have a calm voice, and I just say, girls, would you, listen, I want to ask you nicely. Would you please just settle down? It's amazing what a gentle spirit can do to other people. So remember, number one, that it does diffuse conflict. Number two, gentleness is a great witness. I believe that gentleness is a great witness to unbelievers the people who don't know Jesus, because it's one of the marks of a Christian. If somebody expects that you're going to be a jerk, um, that you're going to respond so negatively to them. Um, but if we respond gently, it shows that we don't have the same mentality as the world, but we have the mentality of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we'll, we'll be known by our fruits. Matthew 7, 17 through 18, it says this. It says, likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. In other words, it's fruit of the Spirit. When, 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 we, when we have Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit living within us, one of the things that we will bear is a, a gentle spirit. great example is how you drive. I'll just go there right now. Um, somebody pulled out in front of me the other day, and they immediately turned on their turn signal. I hate when they do that. They just pulled right out in front of me, turned on the turn signal, and turned, and I had to slam on brakes. And, and, and I, I just threw up my hands. I was like, oh, what are you doing? And my girls, one of the girls said, Daddy, why are you angry? And I tried to explain it to her, but then I caught myself. I was preaching on gentleness this week. And, and I realized that I wasn't having a gentle spirit. You see, when people see us being unkind or harsh, we're not exemplifying the life and the character of Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus didn't call us to be defenseless. He didn't call us to back down. He, he told us to stand for what was right, um, but to do it in a kind and loving way. And I believe that people, including our children, want to become followers of Jesus when they see us uh, living differently than the world. Uh, the third thing uh, that gentleness does, it demonstrates trust in God and not in self. So when we are gentle, people realize that we trust in our Father and we don't trust in our own self to take care of all of our problems. You ever caught yourself saying this right here? 
well, I'm about to take care of this. Well, I'm about to show him what's up. Or I'm about to tell her how it is. Or I'm about to deal with this. And you take it right out of God's hands. You never even, never even put it in his hands. And, and you put it in your own. You see, even if somebody's not being kind towards us, we can still be kind towards them because we recognize that God is sovereign and all things must go through God's hands before they hit us. Why be rough and gruff with somebody when we know he's got the whole world in his hands? We grew up all singing that song. He's got the whole world in his hands. We believe that he's got the whole world in his hands. Then we need to entrust him with the whole world and entrust him with our lives. Psalm 37, 5 says this. This is a really simple verse to memorize. Psalm 37, 5, but it says, Commit your way to the Lord. Trust him, and he will act. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust him, and he will act. In other words, if we give it to God, God will take care of it, but we got to trust him with it. we got to live according to his word. Lastly, I believe gentleness brings us peace. It brings us peace. Um, you know, there's something about when we're just struggling and we're angry and we're mad. There's something about being able to hand it over to God that can bring us great inner peace. Uh, a lot of us don't really have inner peace. we got inner turmoil. A lot of us have inner turmoil right now. Our world is crazy and our world is hurting. Our world is in pain. And we don't have this inner peace. And, you know, there's, there's a scripture I thought about this week from Matthew. And, and Jesus, um, it, it, says, it says this, says, Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And the reason I thought about the scripture is because the word meek, um, meekness is actually used, I think in the, in the, in the King James Version, it's used in, in the place of gentleness. Meekness. And meekness actually just means that we're submissive. And what this word means, not that we're submissive to other people, but that we're submissive to God. So blessed are those who submit unto God and they will inherit the earth. Now, what does it mean to inherit the earth? Because we know we're going to inherit the kingdom of heaven if we're believers, but what, do we, what does it mean to inherit the earth? I mean, I think what it means is that we find our own peace and comfort while we're here on this earth when we entrust ourselves to God and when we submit to Him and when we have a gentle spirit and when we trust that God has all authority and all knowing and all power. So I believe that God calls us to live a life of compassion and He calls us to live a life of peace. Um, but our peace must be internal. It's not just something that we say and talk about. It's got to be something that comes from within, from the Holy Spirit, that comes from the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit that we've been talking about. So here's the deal. I, I said at the beginning, um, my guess is this is one of the fruits uh, you know, that, that a lot of us struggle with. How do I be gentle in, in, in a world that's filled with pain, in a world that's filled with violence? Well, once again, I remind you that you can only have this if you're in tune with God. Because if you're, you're not in tune with him, there's no way that we can be gentle in a world that's, that's so painful um, and, and so filled with violence. So a uh, couple of things that, that I, would, I would challenge you to remember today. Number one, I want to challenge you to remember that, that people are watching us. That people are watching how we respond to everything. Um, our children are watching us. They're watching how I drive. They're watching what I say. Our grandchildren are watching, our friends are watching, the world is watching, and people who don't know Jesus Christ are watching you and I. And so I just want to encourage you today, if you're thinking to yourself, man, I, I just, you know, I really do need to be more gentle, and I've been rough, and I've been gruff, and I've been that way with people, and I've been that way with my family, and I've been that way with my friends, I want to challenge you to say, um, maybe just ask God to give you that. So what the Bible tells us to do, it says, ask and we will receive, knock and the door will be open, seek and we will find. Uh, and the Holy Spirit will give us this gift. So if you happen to be a man today here who's struggling with your temper, if you happen to be a woman who's struggling with the way that you're treating others, if you're a child who's here and you're just going, man, I am not being a representative of Jesus today, I just want to pray for you. And um, I want to remind you that God has this. Lastly, once again, I'll say it three times, four times a day you got to have the Holy Spirit. And the way that you receive the Holy Spirit is by asking God for this precious gift. The Bible says that if we believe in Him, if we believe in our heart and we confess that He is Lord, that we turn from our ways, we turn from, the Bible says, our wicked ways, and we seek Him, that 
our life will be changed, that we'll be a new creation, that, that behold, the old is gone and the new has come. And so if you're watching this by video today, it's an opportunity, this is a calling, this is an invitation for you to commit your life to Jesus and to open yourself up to the Holy Spirit who will fill you with more love than you can ever imagine. So I invite you to pray with me today, and I invite you to receive the best gift you ever could is a relationship with Jesus Christ. So let us pray. Um, Father, I know that lots of folks uh, listening today may struggle with being gentle, um, we have short fuses. We become easily angered. Lord, I pray for the stress today that we're all carrying. I pray that you take that burden off of us, Father. All the tension that's going on in our world today, all the fear and pain and hurt, and I just ask that we can give it to you, Father. Father, I pray for peace um, over the men and the women and the children watching the service today. I pray for peace for our congregation. I pray that we learn to be gentle with others as you were with us. And Father, just as my girls held those baby chicks. Um, I thank you that you hold us in your hands like that. I ask you today, Lord, to forgive us of our sins. We repent from the mistakes that we've made. We've all made plenty of them, Lord, and we give our life to you. Father, if somebody doesn't know you today, Father, I just ask that they will open their heart and that they will receive you by confessing, today, Jesus, I recognize that you are Lord that I am a sinner, that I am in need of God's grace. And I recognize today that you lived, you died, and you were resurrected on the third day. I claim you as Lord of my life. We love you, Lord. We thank you. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen and amen. I could just sit I could just sit and wait for all your goodness Hope to feel your presence I could just stay I could just stay right where I am And hope to feel you Hope to feel something again for all.